So those ceramic animals were pretty cool and this is pretty neat as well. It's Dominic the primetime treasure hunter welcome back to another video I hope you all enjoyed that estate sale hunt that we went to yesterday at that house from 1847 if you didn't check it out go back it was a lot of fun a lot of cool treasure hunting tips uh, in that one I mentioned at the end of that video that there was another estate sale going on today so I just finished my son's basketball game this morning and now it is about 11 a.m. the estate sale starts at noon so we're gonna head over there right now. It's in an area I normally would not really go to because it's pretty high society and a lot of the times I don't really find good things over there. But this one may be an exception. It's from my number one favorite estate sale dealer. So I always go to her sales no matter what. So let's head out to that one right now and see what we can find. Okay, so we are here. There is a long line of cars that is set up as you can see a lot of people waiting inside there's the house right there that we're going to hit up um, my name is already on the list so we just got to park our car and uh, find a spot down here somewhere here we are number 36. Dominic. so these are some very cool japanese pieces i always say to look for Japanese vintage stuff. Uh, this turtle bank is pretty cool right here. You could see on the bottom, uh, it says that it was made in Japan. I believe this actually was made by Lefton. Uh, they made ceramic salt and pepper shakers too. Uh, this tiger is probably the best one. Uh, it's really neat. Uh, also uh, made in Japan. Uh, this one made by Lego, not Lego. Uh, this is a different company you're gonna come across that makes some good vintage items. And that's definitely one to look for, L-E-G-O. Uh, this red elephant is pretty neat as well. A lot of people love elephants. And uh, this one, as you can see here, was also made in Japan. So another very collectible type of item here. We've got another turtle as well, turtles, very collectible too. And then we have this butterfly, which is pretty neat, makes me think of uh, Jesse shops. Uh, maybe she would like something like this, but there's a lot of people who collect uh, vintage butterfly stuff. It's a little discolored on the bottom, but uh, still, you're not going to see that when it's hanging up. So that's a pretty neat piece, too. So those ceramic animals were pretty cool, and this is pretty neat as well. Uh, it's a valuable item. Anything by Mattel, uh, definitely look for it uh, if it's a vintage item. This has the original box. Uh, the piece is in here, so you can see it right there. I will uh, pull it out so you can see it some more. So this is the main piece that's used to mold the plastic and it has a lot of the different pieces uh, inside of it as well. So great piece overall, doesn't have a price on it either, which means uh, it's not gonna cost much on checkout. All right, I'm gonna dedicate this one right here to Star from Flippin' Hippos <laughs> right there. That's a cool piece. The box is in pretty bad shape. If you're curious what it looks like inside, uh, this is what it looks like. It's pretty neat. Unfortunately, this one doesn't really have much value unless it was uh, unused and this clearly is not. It's got a bunch of damage to it, so you can see the box is pretty shot and stuff. But anyway, there you go, Star. Okay, see these things? I think they're pretty cool myself, but no one wants them. They don't sell. Do not pick these things up. These are on my no-low list. Things not to get. Now, this is a pretty cool piece. I'm surprised it's still here, probably because it's not in a frame, but looks really neat. All these military guys here lined up. Nice black and white vintage photo. It's pretty cool. What do you think? It is cool. Yeah, right? What period of time is it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
got a little damage to it, but you know, I could see this looking really nice in a frame. Something to do some research on for sure. I mean, people will just love zooming in on these guys and looking at the different faces. Like, I really like this guy right here. <laughs> this guy's pretty cool. Uh, look at this guy, he's just chilling. I love this picture. This is so neat. Here you go, Jesse Shops. Another old granny closet just for you. I know you love this stuff. <laughs> You'd probably buy every single thing in here, but uh, not for me. I'm gonna pass this, this stuff off. Sorry. Oh boy. Squatting down in this room here and uh, found a little trilogy that people left behind. Now this one by Cigarette Unset is pretty cool. It's worth about 25 to 30. So it's a neat one I'm gonna just pick up, toss in the box. I said again, I can't forget to give you the people's time. So you got a little snack too. All right. I love the way of your sons. All right, everyone, so we are out of there. Uh, basically what happened ahead of the sales, the estate sale dealers took the items from the basement and brought them up and took the items from the second floor and brought them down. So everything for sale was on one level. The result of that was that all the buyers were also condensed on one level. So it was pretty close quarters and I couldn't really bring the phone out like I normally would to show you all around the room uh, because it was just too tight so you couldn't see all the things I would have liked you to be able to see. I really had to pick and choose my spot so you could even see some of the items that I sourced uh, when I was in there. Now I did know ahead of time that there were going to be uh, toys and there were going to be other collectibles like those ceramics that I showed you in the very beginning because there were pictures posted online about the sale. The problem is is that when I walk in the door I don't exactly know where that room is going to be. Is it to the left? Is it to the right? And if so, where? Is it all the way down to the left? All the way down to the right? you've got to try to do some reconnaissance work to get some of that information. So you could ask the state sale dealer if you have a good relationship with them, or even if you're just starting out, you could try and ask, and they may tell you. Uh, in this instance, I didn't even have to do that. They already know the kind of stuff that I like, and they just said, Dominic, back right, and pointed me in the right direction to go to. So I zoomed right over there, and that's how I found all of these items so fast. Now. In terms of strategy, uh, and that was just one that I told you, but there's another one, is when you go into the room in the beginning and there's a lot of stuff that you see that you like, I always tell you, you have to have your hand on the item so that you could claim it. Well, what if there's a bunch of things, like all of those ceramics, you can't possibly have your hand on all of them, you're not an octopus, right? So what you have to do, and this is another reason why I take the box with me, is I scoop the items up I put them in the box and then I take them out one by one and I start looking at them. Now, I try to be fair to the other people and that I really only grab the things that I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna purchase. And in fact, everything that I grabbed and put in the box was something that I wound up getting anyway. But it's a good strategy to do because if not, what's gonna happen, if you don't have your hand on the item, like if you don't have your hand on this turtle and you're just staring at it, it's like sitting over here on a shelf, well, guess what? It doesn't matter how much you intend to get it, that does not prevent someone else from coming in, grabbing it, and taking it right away from you, right under your nose. And that happened to a lady today, and she was very upset. She complained to the state sale dealers, but as the state sale dealers explained to her, and as I would say as well, that is part of what happens. You have to indicate in some way that you have possession of the item and it's not just by staring at it. So keep that in mind. Uh, I wound up getting all of those ceramic pieces and this is another thing in terms of strategy. I talk a lot about buying in bulk, but when you see sticker prices on things like this, even if they seem a little much, remember there's ways you can get that price negotiated down, especially if you get a lot of things at the sale. So I did not wind up paying what this sticker price is. What I have wanted to pay six bucks for this, 
nah, not really. Um, but what I wound up getting them for at the end is good. So let's go through the price tags for this and show what it would have cost and then what it actually did cost when we factor everything in. So I didn't get to show you both sides of this at the sale, but it's uh, really cool. I love the bright colors. I believe all of these items that I got were Japanese because they were all clustered uh, together. Some are marked Japanese on the bottom, some are not, but uh, a lot of them are known for just having these really bright colors. They just have a vintage feel to it. You kind of have to uh, grab it. In fact, if you touch it right there, you know on my channel you can actually. So just reach your hand through. Just touch it right there. That's right, right there. So you could feel that it has a nice kind of smooth vintage type of construction to it. And uh, yeah, these are, these are really cool pieces. This one here is awesome. This is my favorite one. I love this colorful Tiger Bank. Uh, just so cool how they blended those colors together. This comes from the 1960s, as do all these other ceramic pieces. It's really in remarkable condition uh, given its age. So I'm excited about this one. It's got the uh, stopper on the bottom, as do all the other banks uh, that I have as well. So that's important to look for. That will add value to it. People like when they have the original stoppers on it. So this one had a $6 price tag on it as well. Uh, then, speaking of bright uh, orange and greens and yellows, I really like this butterfly. Uh, again, I think this would be something that Jesse Shops would like, but uh, she'll tell me in the comments section. Really cool piece. Uh, this one uh, had a $5 price tag on it. Now, from a sourcing perspective, would I want to pay $5 on it? No, but again, I'm keeping in mind that I'm gonna get a bulk deal uh, at the end. So there's that one. Uh, then, uh, if you like elephants, I really love uh, this piece here. Really cool red elephant bank. This one had a $3 uh, price tag on it, also made in Japan, as I showed you earlier, and also has the stopper on it. And then for the turtle fans out there, this one had a $4 price tag on it. So you could keep all sorts of stuff in there. I mean, you could use it as an ashtray, you could put coins in there, keys, whatever you would like to do. Again, nice and bright, orange, yellow, greens, browns, nice and colorful. So I like this piece. So uh, those five pieces total would have cost me $24 at the original sticker price. But I did get some other things as well. Uh, I just showed you uh, some books that I purchased in one of the rooms. So I got another Peanuts book to add to the one that I got from the uh, state sale yesterday. So you see how you just keep buying these things and they add up. Uh, then there was this uh, set as well, which goes for around, uh, like I said, 25, uh, 30 bucks. And then there was this uh, Snoopy piece. Now this one is actually a Snoopy made in Japan and it's uh, made by a company called Sutton. Now, these have zero track record of selling in the last 60 days on eBay. And the reason why, in my opinion, is because people are pricing it too high. So they're putting it in like the 30 to $40 price range. Well, when I sourced it for what I sourced it for, I could put this up for $19.99 or $24.99, and I think it will definitely sell because peanut stuff sells. So it doesn't make sense to me to see a Japanese made a peanuts item that's not selling. That tells me people are overpricing it. So I'm just gonna come in, source it low, and price it lower than all the other people and make a quicker uh, sale on that item. Now, another item that I picked up that I want you to be on the lookout for are these Krenz Special miniature baseball bats. They are really neat collectible items. Many of them sell on eBay for over $100. There's not currently one available uh, for sale on eBay for less than $80 and change. Now the value will partly depend on the name of the player on the bat. Now, while I know Whitey Ford, I don't know Whitey Moore, so I'll have to do some research there. But remember, there are collectors out there who are what we call completists. So even if there is the name on the end of the bat that's not one that's well known for someone who's a completist collector of these bats and they don't have this particular one, then they will want to get it. So uh, I still think that we'll get a good sale on this one, even though it's not like Babe Ruth or uh, Joe DiMaggio or, or even Whitey Ford or something like that. So a uh, good pickup, especially for the $2 price tag that's on it. But again, I just paid one price for everything and we'll go over that in just a moment. Uh, this one had no uh, price tag on it. I showed it to you earlier. Uh, this is just really neat. Again, I'll give you another a close up of it right there. All these different uh, 
uh, guys in the military uniform, just really neat. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, selling that one on eBay. I'm not sure uh, what I'll eventually get for it, but uh, my strategy with that will be to take a lot of nice close-up shots uh, for the eBay listing so people could really, really get some nice up-close uh, looks at it. I know they could zoom in, but I also want to zoom it in uh, myself. And then uh, the last piece I believe that's in there was this vacuum form. Let me, let me see if there's anything else in there. Yeah. This is it. So uh, this one is great. Uh, depending on what I find in there in terms of how complete it actually is. I mean, I know I pulled it out somewhat, but there was one of these that sold recently on eBay where somebody took a crayon or a pen and basically colored this whole guy's face in and his hair, and he doesn't look anything like what's on this, and it's still sold for $175 plus I think some shipping. So uh, at a minimum, I should be able to get $100 out of this. So uh, definitely excited about this uh, purchase right here. All right, so how much did I pay for everything you're wondering already? Well, remember the ceramics alone would have cost $24. I got everything in that box, including the vacuum form, the pictures, all the ceramics, the plush doll, uh, everything, the books, everything you saw, $20 dollars just one box price is what i paid when i walked up they didn't even look at the stickers care to look at the stickers they just know me enough they're like all right how about twenty dollars for everything and that's what we did so i am beyond thrilled to get these items for that price by the way i will later on write the items on here just in case you're wondering i put the address on there at a later point but she just leaves it uh blank for me uh for now which is fine if there's a ton of stuff like what i got yesterday i'll just write miscellaneous estate sale items just in case you're wondering for uh inventory purposes how i handle that and by the way uh my first name does not have a k on it in reality uh just to see but um you know, she likes to put a K on there sometimes, I guess. Well, that's about it for today, everybody. Uh, don't forget to come by my channel Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will not want to miss this, especially if you like 1980s nostalgia and toys. I have Michael D. French coming on from the Retro Blasting YouTube channel. Go check it out already in advance. The guy's absolutely amazing. He's got about 60,000 subscribers, and he's like one of the main people who you want to go to on YouTube to learn about those types of items. It's just going to be a great show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, mark your calendars for that. Uh, click the bell icon on top of my channel. That will give you notifications for when I go live, when a new video pops up, that sort of thing. Now, if you like the video, please make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment down below. Uh, remember, if there's anything you see here that you like, just let me know. Uh, put a message in the comment section or hit me up on uh, Facebook Messenger and uh, I will try to uh, work out a deal with you uh, and give you a good price on it. So uh, with that being said, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center and my Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you all at the next video, everyone. Take care.